Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. Today, I am thinking about summer, and specifically, I'm thinking about the beach. The beach is just my most favorite thing in the world. I just love to visit anytime I can. But when I can't go to the beach, sometimes it's nice to have things set out around my house just to remind me of it. So these are the DIYs I'm working on today. In the first DIY, I'm using this canvas that I got at the Dollar General store for $4. And I'm painting half of it with an aqua blue color that I mixed the paints because I didn't have just the perfect aqua blue color that I wanted. So I had to mix some blues and some whites together. I had made a smaller version of this painting for my Instagram feed, and I got such good feedback on it that I decided to make a larger one and put it in my video. And I will also link in the description box below the tutorial I used to make the crushed glass. Once you have half of the canvas covered in the aqua blue, then the other half is going to be white. And so this is almost getting to the really fun part. Well, there's several fun parts of this painting. This whole process is just a really fun DIY. When you get your white spread out on the bottom half, then you take your paintbrush up into the blue and see how pretty that is blending together. Go up into the blue and then drag some of that blue back down into the white to make an ombre effect. So we're going to make some crushed glass and these decorative glass stones came from the Dollar Tree. I have two bags of the blue, one bag of clear and you don't really need to do two whole bags of the blue. I just wanted to keep some on hand. So you could probably do one bag of the blue and one bag of the clear. Now it is important for these stones to go in the skillet flat side down and then put a lid on and turn the heat up to about medium heat. And then these are going to uh, cook <laughs> for 10 to 15 minutes. While your stones are heating up, you need to get together an ice bath and it needs to be a lot of ice because this water needs to be very, very cold. And after the 10 to 15 minutes are up, your stones go into the ice bath and you will hear them sizzle and crackle and pop. And that is the glass crackling. I let the stones sit in the ice bath for just a couple of minutes and then I drained them in my sink. And you can see how that glass has cracked all throughout in the middle and that's going to make it easier to crush. Then you'll need a towel and make sure it's a towel that you don't really care anything about because it's going to get ruined. Uh, dry your decorative stones very well and then we'll start the crushing. I want to preface this by saying do this on a surface that you don't care anything about or maybe put something hard plastic underneath a cutting board or something to protect your surface because the glass will go through the towel and nick whatever you're working on and I didn't think of that and so my work surface got scratched up. And this is what you'll have. Isn't that just so pretty? I just love how this crushed glass looks. And I did this whole process with the bag of clear stones too. 
Now to make the painting, a lot of people use resin, but I wanted to make this a completely dollar store project. So I'm using the fix all adhesive that you get from the Dollar Tree. And then you just make a nice thick line of it in the center of the painting. Then use a foam brush to spread that glue out in both directions on each side of the line. And you can see I'm not using the broad side of the brush, I'm just using the edge, the very top edge of the brush, to pull that glue out onto the rest of the painting. Then sprinkle all your crushed glass onto the glue. And I did my clear first, and then I put some blue on top of that, and then I put some more clear, and just kind of put the colors where you want them to be and work with it the way you like it. And I found out that I liked the really super fine crushed glass, the glitter-like glass, better than the chunkier pieces. So I tried to aim for a lot of that finer glass and only some of the chunkier pieces stayed on my painting. I really should have been wearing gloves because some of these really fine pieces can stick in your skin like a splinter and you don't want that. So please put gloves on when you're handling this glass. So I sort of patted the glass down into the glue, and then once I was done doing that, then I shook the, the loose pieces back off. So you can see that was a lot that shook off of the painting, more than I wanted. So then I went back and added more glass, added more glue, sort of in layers, just putting stuff where I wanted it and where I thought it looked best. When you have it looking like you like it, then let it set for a good while, at least 15 minutes, and use a bristle brush to brush off any more loose pieces that there might be because you don't want your painting to continually be dropping pieces of glass. And doesn't this make you think of the ocean and the waves and just the sparkles on the water? I just love this painting so much. But the last thing that I will do to it is add one of the starfish that you get from the Dollar Tree right now and they're all their pretty nautical supplies. And I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom corner blue side And then the sparkle ocean painting is done and I adore it. The next DIY is inspired by something that I saw at Kohl's and it was for 30 something dollars and I know sometimes they go half off but even at $15 I thought I could make this myself. So to make this you will need a bag of seashells from the Dollar Tree, this curvy glass vase from the Dollar Tree, a glass ashtray from the Dollar General store which was only a dollar and the smaller jar of glass seashells from the Dollar Tree, and some E6000 glue. 
So all supplies considered, that's only $4 if you already have the glue. If you don't have E6000, you could use the Fix-All adhesive from the Dollar Tree and you're only in it for $5. I liked to spread my seashells out on the counter so I could see all the different sizes and colors. And then I started filling the vase. And I liked to layer the small ones and the large ones and with all of them, I tried to face the, uh, I don't know what to call it, the seashell, the pretty side facing out. The glass ashtray from the Dollar General Store fits perfectly on the vase from the Dollar Tree. So I'm using the E6000 glue to glue it down in place. Then be careful handling your seashell vase until that glue sets. I know that the candle holder at Kohl's did not have any starfish embellishment, but that's what's going to make our seashell candle holder even better. So using that starfish from the Dollar Tree, I used two pieces of raffia. Well, actually it's not even raffia. It is two pieces of the hula skirt that you get at the Dollar Tree. And I've been using pieces off of this hula skirt for over a year and I still have hula skirt left. So. It's a great alternative for raffia. So I just tied a little knot with the <laughs> so-called raffia, hot glued it into place, and tied it to the seashell candle holder. And here is a peek at what the candle holder turns out looking like, but now we have to make the seashell candles. For this, you will need four of the tall glass candles from the Dollar Tree, and you'll put them in a pot of water to boil. Now your water should be about halfway up the candle. Turn your heat on medium and let them boil. Mine took longer because I really didn't have enough water, but I've done this before with the water halfway up the candles and it took about an hour. Once the wax is all melted, turn your heat off and remove the candles from the heat. Then you will fish out the wicks and I was just using a wooden dowel that I got at the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of 10 or 12. Now we're going to make a candle mold and we're using these plastic bottles that I found at the Dollar Tree. I liked them because they were clear and since I'm going to be putting seashells inside these candles, I wanted to be able to see what I was doing. So first remove the lids and we're gonna be working with the bottom side and they have these stickers on the bottom and I realized I can use those, so save those. Put those aside once you've removed them. Now we need to drill holes in the bottom. This is for the wick to go through. Then feed the wick through the hole that you drilled and secure the bottom in place using the sticker that was on the bottle. And then we're going to reinforce that with some painter's tape. Then use a utility knife to cut the top end of the bottle off just below where the end of the wick is. The more even you cut it, probably the better, but don't worry if it's completely uneven because mine sure was. So the next thing is to take one of those wooden dowels from the Dollar Tree and cut it in half and I'm using the dog toenail clippers to do that. They're perfect for cut cutting those wooden dowels. Then we're going to attach the end of the wick to the wooden dowels and I'm just using painter's tape. 
I actually forgot a step because I was so excited to pour the candle wax. I forgot after I attached my wicks and got them in place, I was going to spray the insides of these candle molds with cooking spray so the candle would release easier. So remember to do that first. Now we're all set to pour the wax and I put my candle molds in an old cake pan because I really wasn't sure if that plastic was going to hold or if it was gonna melt with this hot wax, but it held. The plastic held very well. And so I poured one candle into each of the candle molds. Then get your seashells ready and I'm using the small jars. I'm gonna use one of the small jars for each of the candles and just a couple of the bigger seashells. And all of those came from the Dollar Tree. I'm using another wooden dowel from the Dollar Tree to put the seashells down into the candle wax. And I like to push them up against the edge of the candle mold using the wooden dowel, and that way they will show through the candle when the whole process is done. After I got some of the seashells into place, I took the third jar candle and I poured it into each of these two candles. And I'm making one of these pillar candles taller than the other one. And then continue putting seashells down inside. The fourth jar candle that's still sitting in the pot of hot water over on the stove is used in case you need a second pour. So this is if you notice that your candle is starting to dip down in the center around the wick, then you can use the fourth candle to do a second pour on top and that will level everything out. They recommend letting your candle set and cool for 60 to 90 minutes. Now I waited 60 minutes, but I really wish that I would have waited probably longer because my taller pillar candle actually broke when I was trying to get it out of the mold. So I would wait the longer, I would wait 90 minutes. So the unmolding goes like this. I removed the tape from the bottom and I've moved the dowel from the top from around the wick, removed the plastic sticker from the bottom and cut the metal part of the wick off so it can be pulled through the plastic mold. If I had remembered to spray the inside of the mold with cooking spray, maybe my candle would have slid out like I thought it would, but I forgot that step. So here's what I had to do. And if you forget, you can do this too. I used my hair dryer to heat up the candle just a little bit to get it to pull away from the edge or slide, melt and slide out of that mold. When it didn't completely slide out, then I thought, okay, I will cut off this end and I used my utility knife to do that and I can push it through because now I have just a cylinder to push everything through. The candle did push through the cylinder that time, but the top of it did break off and I lost the top piece of my candle. My smaller candle all came out in one piece, so I was really happy about that. And here are the seashells peeking through. I cut the wicks off of my candles and I used a hairdryer to smooth out the top of my broken taller candle and it turned out just fine. I really love my seashell candle holder and my seashell candles. And the last DIY today is using this canvas that comes from the Dollar Tree. They have all kinds of different ones. This is just the one that I had on hand. You want to cover over the design with white paint. What you are about to witness is my very first paint pour. And these are the colors I'm using. A pale blue, a bright blue, a Laguna aqua color, and to make a coral color, cameo pink and outrageous orange. But in the end, I actually have to add some red too. 
I made my own pouring medium using white school glue from the Dollar Tree and I mixed it up with water in a mason jar. I liked the mason jar because it's marked off in the four and eight ounces. And so I poured the glue to the four point, the four ounce mark and then water to the eight ounce mark. And then I stirred it all up using a wooden dowel, but I think that it would be a really great idea just to put the mason jar lid back on and shake it. And then we'll get our paints mixed up with the pouring medium. And I'm starting with the white paint. That's going to go all over the canvas and it's going to help the other paints slide around and it's going to show through underneath and it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> so it is a one-to-one -one ratio of the pouring medium and the paint. Next, I'll mix up the pale blue color and I just used about a tablespoon of paint and again, that one-to-one -one ratio, about a tablespoon of the pouring medium, and I mixed it together with a spatula that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I did this very same process with all the colors that I wanted to use. So like I said, the white paint is going to go all over the canvas. And let me tell you, there is something so satisfying about just pouring this paint all over a canvas and just kind of willy-nilly and letting it drip. Oh, by the way, I'm using an old cookie sheet to catch the paint that wants to drip off the sides. And I'm using a wooden dowel just to kind of smear it all around into all the places. And like I said, this is my very first go at a paint pouring. And so this is just a very beginner friendly way to do it. I've watched uh, different tutorials and things. And I just kind of combined all kinds of ideas to do it my own way. So <laughs> feel free to follow in my steps or find some tutorials that you like to follow. I did have inspiration from a tutorial for this particular painting that I am doing right now and I will link it in my description box below. The design I'm going for is an underwater coral reef. And so I am putting, layering my colors, just pouring them. I really had no idea exactly what I was doing, but I knew I kind of wanted three different main branches. And so I'm layering the paint in three sort of areas. Now I'm going to use the swiping method and using the spatula from the Dollar Tree, but you could use an old credit card or a spoon or anything to drag this paint up and making a coral reef design. And this was so much fun. I keep saying all these new art techniques that I'm learning, Every one is like, oh, it's the funnest thing I've ever done. But I keep coming up with more things that I think is even more fun. This is just so much fun. I can't get over it. The more you drag the colors of that paint up and out into the top of that painting, the more satisfying it is. And if you get some places um, like that place right there, I thought needed a little blue. I just grabbed some blue from the bottom and drug it up through that coral and just kept on going. And I really didn't wanna stop. I just wanted to keep on making more and more little spriggies. <laughs> The lady who inspired me to make this coral reef painting actually wiped her spatula off um, every time that she did a swipe, and I didn't do that. <laughs> I was so excited about making this painting, and I was having so much fun. I forgot totally to wipe my spatula off. And at the bottom, I wanted it to look watery, and I didn't really know what I was doing, <laughs> so I just smeared it into what I thought looked like a watery pool. 
I've been wanting to try paint pouring for so long, I had no idea how fun it was really going to be and affordable because everything that I used came from the dollar stores. When I was done playing in the coral reef paint, then I smoothed out the parts that were dripping along the side with the spatula. And then the only thing left to do is wait. It takes a long, long time for these to dry, as you can imagine, because that is a lot of thick paint on that canvas. So at least 24 hours, maybe even longer. Not bad for my first try, and I can tell you I'm going to be doing more paint pouring in the future. Now here's a look at all the other DIYs today. Summer will be here before we know it, and I hope we all get to go to the beach this year and Thank you for stopping by and watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a big thumbs up if you did and click the link to see the next video in line if you want to see more. Bye.